the fentanyl, the meth seizures continue to get larger and larger. And uh, the, the right's going to tell you that it comes in between the ports of entry, which it does. The left's going to tell you it comes at the port of entry, which it does. And, and they both want to argue over that. But what the truth is, is that we still got an unsecure border. I'm Flint Anderson, founder of Pain, parents and addicts in need. I've been in recovery since 2001, and there isn't much I don't know about recovery. And my mission is to constantly tell the truth about addiction, to make the realities of addiction, recovery, and drug culture known, and to drive awareness and advocate change that ultimately saves lives. And I'm Jason Lachance, a certified recovery coach with a passion for speaking with others and sharing their knowledge to help others seek recovery and maintain long-term sobriety. And this is the Don't Hide the Scars podcast, presented by Payne, parents and addicts in need. Welcoming to the Don't Hide the Scars podcast, the sheriff of Terrell County, Texas, Mr. Cleveland, how are we this morning? Hey, good morning, and uh, thank you all for having me. It's, it's, it's an honor to be on your show, so thank you. Absolutely. Uh, I know you and Mr. Anderson had a good correspondence the other day, so we've got a just a multitude of areas to get into. Flint, I, I, where would you like to start, or would you like me to start? What do we got? I'll tell you what. You know, first of all, Sheriff, with it, we just converse here. Okay, is 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 what we do. We just we just let her all fly, and uh, and 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 we kind of like it that way. No holds barred. So, first of all, thank you for 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 doing this. Um, this is. We all know how important, you know, protecting our border is. And uh, and you guys, I, I just can't give you enough credit. And, you know, we do support you. Um, there's lots of people that do, by the way, you know, yes, and 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 we appreciate you. So, um, um, again, I just kind of want to start out by by saying what in, in reality, what are you seeing there? I mean, let people know it's coming right from the horse's mouth. Yes, sir. And, and to give you a, a little bit just about myself so, so folks know and, and, and know where I'm coming from on this issue. So the, where I'm the sheriff at is my hometown. It's where I grew up. It's where I graduated high school. Um, it's where I came back to 12 years ago to serve as the, the patrol agent in charge of the Border Patrol Station. So I was the commanding officer here and uh, and I'd still be out there. You know, I, I retired at 48, not because I wanted to or I was done. Unfortunately, our sheriff who had also been a 30-year Border Patrol veteran, Santiago Gonzalez Jr., he had a heart attack at, at 55 and didn't make it. So oh, I, sorry. Had, I, I had the time to retire, and uh, and it was time for me to take care of my community that, that raised me in a different manner than I was su supporting at, at the Border Patrol, but also it gives me the opportunity to support the Border Patrol going forward. And, and to be honest, I can support them more from this position as sheriff than I could as, as being their patrol agent in charge. Um, but one one more point I want to mention is when I say take care of this community. So I was raised by my grandmother here. Uh, my parents uh, were pregnant at 16, had me at 17. Um, were you know, that time in American history, free love, drugs and alcohol type stuff. And, uh, um, you know, my other family pulled me, my aunts and uncles pulled me out of that situation. I was raised by my grandmother here. But so many families in this community raised me. Um, I was better off than most kids with two parents. So. Right. Um, nice. nice. <laughs> Gotta love grandmas. Hey, for sure. And I like to build that 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 framework or that groundwork, if you will, because, uh, again, I've spent a lifetime on, on the U.S.-Mexico border other than my time um, in the military and, and then at Washington, D.C. at U.S. Border Patrol headquarters. But what we're seeing here, completely different than what you see on TV and you have seen on TV the last three years um, with asylum seekers, people that are coming to America from all over the world. Um, they're going to Eagle Pass, they're going to El Paso, Lukeville, Arizona, and, and San Diego, California. What we have here are people that still want to enter the country illegally, undetected, sneak in, and, uh, and, and make their journey journey northward to, to various points in America, all over America, to work. Um, but when I, when I say enter in illegally, they're mostly from Mexico. The vast majority are Mexican. The vast majority are adult males. We see a few females, and we see... If we see juveniles, they're typically accompanied by a family member. Um, but but again, they're from Mexico. And in my interviews, I like to make the contrast that right now, this this administration's allowing anybody from around the world to come into our country freely and, and likely will never be seen again, meaning by a, an asylum, um, you, you know, a adjudicator or an immigration judge that they're in America and they're going to be lost in America. Right, um, right. But if you're from Mexico, we still send you back to Mexico. 
And if I had a choice in the whole situation, I'd rather see our neighbors to the south from Mexico. Uh, again, not that they're all um, they're all good people, because we do encounter some that have criminal records, some more extensive than the others. But they're coming here to work, honestly. Um, and our economy relies on it. The American right. economy yeah, relies on illegal alien labor, whether it's picking produce in, in California to uh, to you know beef processing and poultry processing in, in the Midwest, out out into parts of the the Southeast, and then of course construction throughout of America, cleaning of hotels and the the food industry as far as working in restaurants. So that's what we see here. We see mainly Mexicans that are coming to work. Okay. Mm -hmm. How how about um, look? I've been noticing a lot lately about um, you know men in their in their in their late twenties and and mid thirties that are coming in from Syria. Um, I mean that that's that's another concern that I obviously have. What what are you seeing about that? One hundred percent. Not just Syria. Um, other parts of the world. Um, you know, China's been the big one that we're starting to see really really. Uh, Increase so out in San Diego where they catch the, the majority uh, of Chinese nationals, they are now starting to outnumber the amount of Mexican nationals crossing in California. Wow, um, it, 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 and it, it is concerning. Um, not that every one of them are going to come here to, to do something bad, but you still have that potential. And, and I, I'm willing to say 100 sure that some of them are, are being sent here by the Chinese government, um, and, and they'll be going to places throughout America. And, and whether we see something overtly or covertly something's going to happen a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, when, when I, I was watching this one piece and they, an interviewer was there and he was talking to three Syrian men and it was interesting because his, his first question was, um, uh, you know, you know, how did you get, how did you, how did you get here in order to cross the border? And the guy answered the question. Well, then he asked him another question and then all of a sudden he, he went deaf you know, it was like, oh, I, I, I don't, I don't speak English, and I'm going, dude, come on, you just answered the first question in English. You know what? That's the kind of stuff that that you know really concerns me because they're they're lying right out of the gate. You know, yes, sir. I, it, yeah. It, and further, and you should be worried because again, a lot of those countries too, to include China, you know, they're not sharing the the records, if you will, of these people. We don't know who they are. We're taking. Um, their word that their name is such and such, or if they have a passport, even if it it is real or, or it's likely not real, um, we don't know who these people are. We don't have any database to check their background. Um, so most countries don't have you know electronic databases that that compile criminal information on their citizens. So that's that's even it, it even more concerning, if not the most concerning part. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, you know, and I thank you for pointing that out because I think there, that information that there is a lot of uh, Chinese individuals coming across the borders illegally, and it's and like you said, the numbers are really starting to shift. I don't think a lot of people are aware of that, and let alone those type of concerns. Granted, I know that you know, hey, the the Al Pacino version of fictitious movie, but it did display what happened when we, you know, we were taking Cubans in by the flood because some people are, are going to get tired of doing those menial jobs. And like you said, if they don't have any documentation, well, what's the easiest way by perception to generate a greater income? Oftentimes it's through nefarious actions. And you're 100 percent And there's two points I want to make and make sure I'll, I'll get off track. So remind me about what you mentioned, the Cubans. But okay. but going to so already in my community two nights ago, um, I got called out at two in the morning and, and, and there's only there's only four of us here at the sheriff's office. We just hired our, our fourth and I'm I'm part of that fourth. We're the 10th largest county in, in the state of Texas. Um, we're twenty three hundred wow. square miles. Um, we have 54 miles of river with Mexico, uh, but we're we're not one of the greatly populated um, counties. We only have about 800 residents. So there's oftentimes we're catching more people out, you know, throughout a year than there are even in this county. But but I want to make the point that two nights ago when I, I got called out, 200 um, smugglers that were here to pick up a group, they were allowed in on asylum. And it's not the first time we've seen people from Venezuela, from Cuba, and from Nicaragua who have been allowed into our country on asylum. And then next thing you know, they're doing those nefarious acts. They're coming into my county to, to smuggle and not just here all throughout the border. But, but the point I wanted to make on the, the, the Cubans, 
um, you know, the, the Mariano boat lift back in the 70s when Castro emptied the prisons and sent them to, to Florida. A lot of those people are still incarcerated because they're not fit to live in society. Um, I don't have any factual that Venezuela's done the same thing. I've heard that. Um, but for instance, you take that that young lady that was killed in Georgia um, by the Venezuelan last week. You know, it's tragedy. It, it's horrible. Um, and, and what I like to say is we're a country, a rule of law. Venezuela is not. Um, if you break the law in America, there's a consequence. In Venezuela, there, there's likely not if, if you're aligned with the right people or party, right? Right. Um, right. We still have, yes, there, there's a lot of... Uh, disrespect for law enforcement, but we still have, we're rule of law, we have respect for law enforcement here in America. Other countries in Mexico, Central America, South America, a lot of these countries, they're so corrupt, the law enforcement's so corrupt, that they don't either fear the police, or if they do, they, they fear they're going to get beat. So when they come here, it, it's it, it's just not the same culture. Um, it, it's, it's not going to mix well, and we're in for a long time. What's happened over this last three years is going to have a, a long lasting effect, just like the Mariano boat lift back in the seventies, 50 years removed. And we're still encountering some of these Cubans. New Perceptions North, the premier drug and alcohol treatment and recovery center in Central California. A full continuum of medically supervised top quality care with programs for detox and patient residential treatment with dual diagnosis, intensive outpatient treatment, sober living support groups, and more. New Perceptions North provides adult men and women with the highest caliber of professional health care, treating each client with compassion and respect in a safe, comfortable environment to begin the process of recovery to proudly create and sustain a life without addiction. Call 559-978-1507 or visit newperceptionsnorth.com. In your area, I mean, your own little town right there, I mean, is is have you noticed just your crime rate going up because of this? Hey, that's a great question. And uh, one of my talking points that i'll say a talking point but it's a fact we don't have crime in terrell county we have no crime. <laughs> gee i wonder why well, <laughs> that's it, where it, I'm what we have is a, what we have is a border security problem and it, it's right, true right, right but a reason we don't have crime is because we're, we're a community that was established by ranchers and the railroad you know a lot of that living has gone by the wayside just due to, to economics and whatnot but we, we have a 50-man border patrol station here so when you have a community of, you know, there's 800 in the county, 700 in, in Sanderson, the vast majority are, are Border Patrol. Um, so we have a very safe community. But Border <laughs> Security it, it is our main is our main concern here. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the, the other thing, too, is is I can't remember if you mentioned Hondurans or not, um, mm. be, because what we're seeing here in California, especially in San Francisco, is that according to some of our sources, Hondurans are now like the leading drug dealers in, in, in the San Francisco area. Wow. I wasn't aware of that, but, but wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in fact, we, we got one young man that, that um, that's by the way, he's doing great. He's in sobriety. He's, he's just doing fantastic. But he, I mean, he literally was dealing with the Hondurans up there. And he said, these guys, these guys are just nothing but brutal, you know? Yes, sir. And, 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 you know, all that that pocket of Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. I mean, that's it, some pretty some pretty ruthless folks in those areas. And if, if they're involved in a gang, then I mean, they're they, they have no respect for life, honestly. Right. Uh, right. You know, it, it is it, it's what it is. But you mentioned it, of course, California. We we catch mainly people in Terrell County from the states of Mexico of Guerrero, Guanajuato, and Hidalgo, and, and that Guerrero smuggling organization. They're going to Santa Maria, California. I'm not sure if y'all know where Santa Maria is at. Yeah, a we lot do. Of produce, but but mainly strawberries. Um, so I like to tell folks a, a lot of times too that uh, you know, if, if you eat strawberries, which down here we get them sent in from Santa Maria, chances are someone that picked those crossed through Terrell County. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. <laughs> but you know, you and you and you said something earlier, which which it makes total sense look both of us born and raised in california i mean we we live in in you know in the san joaquin valley man i mean we got crops all over the place we feed the world here um and and again those workers are vital to to our economy you know yes, they they truly are 
Um, and, and, and I never want to get away from one of these things without saying, you know, there are decent people out there of all races. Okay. And, and hardworking, um, you know, individuals that just want to raise their families. And I get that, you know, I mean, for the lack of a better term, I'm a product of the sixties and, 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 and early seventies, you know, and I've, and I've kind of got that, you know, that, that heart for, for people that just want to work and raise their families and do what's right, you know, but on the other side of that coin, it's like, holy crap, you know, it, it, it's time we got to shut this thing down. We got to protect ourselves here because it, it, we haven't even touched on fentanyl yet. I, I mean, yeah. it's a, it's and a I'm disaster. Shaking my head agreeing with you. Right. Hey, I, I, I'm, my faith is Christianity and, uh, yep. and being a border patrol agent, I'll tell you what our agents do. You know, a lot of times we're, we're villainized. Um, and a lot of times I say we because I still talk as if I am a Border Patrol agent. But the work they do is tremendous. It, it, it turns into a life-saving effort on, on more times than not. Um, even here at the Sheriff's Office, I get more 911 calls for people crossing our border that are ready to surrender because of the the, the terrain here. It's the most harsh along the 2,000-mile stretch of border with Mexico. But going back to the people we catch, the vast majority are good people. You will have some that, that have some criminal records. They're just like you or me, meaning um, – if you've got a heart, you're, you're going to care. And when you see women, children, it doesn't matter what age, all ages, some of the the, the most poor people you'll ever, it's, it's, and it doesn't matter if they're poor or not. It's just, it's tough on you, man. I mean, it, yeah, the, it is. they're humans. And if you care about people and you've got a heart, it's going to wear on you a hundred percent. Well, how do you, how do you, and maybe fellow officers, how do you manage that stuff that it is taxing? This is, this is a, very taxing thing that we're involved when it's we see another headline of you know 20 people dead in our area or whatever it is how how do you handle that well again i'm from the border um a predominantly hispanic portion but we weren't raised to see, see color when i catch people you know i talk to them i treat them like a person even if it's a criminal someone who i've arrested for smuggling or or some other charge i still treat them like a human um doesn't mean i let my guard down and i always tell them don't mistake my kindness for weakness but, uh, but they're still a human being. Um, and when I catch people crossing our portion of the border, I tell people that it's fun. It's fun chasing the smugglers. I enjoy those who are going to prey on their own people, charging them, taking advantage of them. But, uh, but, but going, I treat them like a human, and I think that's what helps me deal with it. Um, going on to my social media, if, if I could talk real quick. I, sure. I never did social media until I took over a shirt. And I wanted to show primarily we have an issue in Terrell County with border security. And then I want to show the great work that our U.S. Border Patrol agents do. And then thirdly, all the work all of us do, whether it's the, the state of Texas through Governor Abbott's Operation Lone Star, and then to include us. Um, but but I used to, to blur, blur out faces of illegals because, again, I don't want it to turn into me just trying to, to spew political rhetoric. Right. Um, but I, I kind of quit doing that. And, and part of it, I think, was in haste because we were busy and I would just post a picture. But as I thought more about that, also, I have – probably more followers from Mexico, Central America, and then places in the United States that are people that have made it successfully. that are watching for family members. And honestly, I think it gives them at times, it helps them to know, Hey, my cousin got caught. Okay. He's not left dead in the desert somewhere. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and the reason I say that, and I mentioned before we went on air, I don't like to pit one administration against the other. This whole problem really goes other than what's going on right now, they, they, they both had a hand in it, right? They, right. they, none of them have completely solved it. And I don't know that we'll ever will, but, but the point I want to make, and that I made earlier is that, Hey, I worked under five different presidential administrations. I started my career with president Clinton, worked under president Bush, to president Obama and to president Trump, all four of those administrations bipartisan, they all contributed to a safer and more secure border. Yep. All of them did. They all built, um, fencing. They all added technology. They all added border patrol agents. But what's happening right now with this administration it is nothing even near what happened to those pre previous right. administrations. Correct. This administration's doing absolutely nothing. So right. it, it's not me trying to pit Democrat and Republican. It's just this administration's not doing anything. Right. It's just facts, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, just, it's a fact. It's fact. So, yeah. So with that, historically, we'd have maybe one death a year, someone crossing our border Ill illegally, maybe one. Um, this last three years, we've had 37. Wow. Tell me what the difference is. We've had our apprehensions went up the first year President Biden took office 289 percent as compared to the previous year. That second year he was off in office compared to that 
again, that last year Trump was in office, 418%. And then it dropped down to 189%. But that's still 189% more than what we were seeing. So um, that's the problem. And that's that's the honest truth. Yeah, you know, I've 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 got this saying. You know, we we can take a Scud missile and shove it up a camel's ass from five thousand miles away, but we can't somehow protect our border. You know, there's there's some. I'm sorry, there's something wrong with that picture. Not all of us are idiots, you know. And uh, and and the fact remains that you're right. Um, everybody, every every one of those administrations had a hand in doing something to enhance the safety of of us, the U.S. citizens, in regards to border security. And this administration has done nothing. When I sit there and I watch Mayorkas on on these clips, I want to vomit in my mouth. This guy is beyond the worst I have ever ever come across in my entire life. And the man needs to be impeached, whatever it is, do something to this guy because he's created nothing but death and destruction. Guess what? On both sides of the fence. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and, and unfortunately, I, I think we're, we're in for another nine months of, of what we've experienced this last sure. three years and, until... <laughs> until we have an opportunity to change that and hopefully voters come out and, and make a change. Right. Yeah. right. Well, and it, we're in, you know, we've talked to a couple of, of different people about this and we'd had uh boy, was it, it was last year, um, uh, uh, special agent, uh, Bill Bodner from, uh, DEA. DEA and he was in and, you know, we, the rhetoric got out there enough that somehow so many people got on board with decimating our public health and safety. Yep. Yes. And I just don't see how we have a prosperous society, let alone individuals, if we continue down this road. I mean, I personally, hey, I got to be honest, I'm in recovery, Sheriff. I I've been handcuffed before, okay? It was my fault, my <laughs> doing. And what you said, that the officer was incredibly polite, like, you know, oh, do you like what you do? And, you know, and I was a little rude at first, and I said, I'm sorry. I'm just upset at myself right now. It's not, sure. it's not your fault, officer. But... I've never seen such a disrespect for those that protect yeah. our public health and safety. And this rhetoric has got to change. It just it has does. to. Yeah. It does. You know, it, it, and if, if I may, um, and, and I know, I know uh, it's kind of shifting that conversation going into that. Have you all seen that, that latest seizure down in Eagle Pass? Uh, no. Of, of the, the meth that was um, three and a half tons? Wow. Three and a half tons? Three and a half tons. Full wow. of that. It, it, um, and it, I hadn't seen it really on the headline news yet. And I didn't have a chance to speak about it in an interview yesterday, but three and a half tons. And uh, that was an evil pass. Again, that's been ground zero for all the asylum claimers. So while the, again, we say this is the cartel working all this, and it, and it truly is, they're able to flood this area with people. Uh, obviously, at the ports of entry where, where this was at, seized, um, and they've had to take some focus off the bridge to help with the humanitarian portion. I can't imagine what's made it through. Honestly, yeah. it, that's that's the fact. The fentanyl, the meth seizures continue to get larger and larger. And uh, the, the right's going to tell you that it comes in between the ports of entry, which it does. The left's going to tell you it comes at the port of entry, which it does. And, and they both want to argue over that. But what the, the, the truth is, is that we still got an unsecure border. So when we talk about border security, immigration is separate. We have to secure our border first. We have to stop a bad person. We have to stop dangerous drugs coming in. Um, we can we can work that immigration piece later. We have to secure our border first. But uh, but those the, the, it, it's unbelievable that amount. Yeah, you, you, you 6, know, thousand that, pounds. That's that's just that's just unbelievable. See, and again. Boy, I could I, I I got about eighty five things I want to talk about here. <laughs> pick one. I got I got I got to calm down and pick one. Okay, so first of all, I, I I think what a lot of people don't understand is this. And again, sheriff, you correct me if I'm wrong. I got no problem being wrong and corrected on anything. But when you start looking back, 
We talked about this quite a bit. When you start looking back at China in the 1800s, let's just let's just start there, and their opium problem that they had in the 1800s, that was caused by the British. It was not China that got their citizens high. It was Britain. Okay. Now, and, and now, so what China did is they go in, they basically locked up every person that was addicted to opium. They killed all the drug dealers. And here's what China says to this day. We will not forget. And so what China's doing is they don't, they're smart. They don't have to drop bombs. What they're doing is they're sending this stuff. They're not even, they're not even sending it over the border to us. They're sending it to Mexico. That's where the cartels get all the properties of fentanyl. That's where it's made. That's where it's manufactured. That's where it's put into press pills. That's where it's the, 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 the powder comes from. And, and then it's coming over the border from, from there. So this, a, again, I hope I'm making sense here. It goes deeper than, than just protecting that southern border. It, you're right. It starts in China. Because China, if you look at all their methods of, of accomplishments, and no matter what the topic is, they take decades to get it right and to do it correctly, and they've got nothing but time. And 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 I'm waiting at some point for this shit to be put in a water supply somewhere. You know, I, I, r r right? All those Chinese that are coming in, who's, I mean, that, that's... Right. I, yeah. I, I agree 100%. Other than I'm, I'm speechless because you that that's the point exactly. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, please call Pain Parents and Addicts in Need at 559-579-1551 or visit us online at painnonprofit.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Pain Nonprofit. And please subscribe to the Don't Hide the Scars podcast and share with others wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And if you would like to donate to Pain, Parents and Addicts in Need, please click the link in the description to make your tax deductible donation today and help us save more lives gripped by addiction. Since I've taken over as sheriff, I've been able to go to DC and speak on border security. I've been able to meet with various fentanyl families, those who have lost loved ones to fentanyl. Um, I've worked with various groups. I've, I've spoke at various events, and, and there's one called Lost Voices of Fentanyl, and April is one of the co-founders there, and she says it best. She says, China's killing Americans without firing a single bullet. That's it. It's, yeah, They're accomplishing what they want to accomplish, and it, it's so true. Um, and then you couple with what's going on along the border with, you know, now they're outnumbering Mexicans crossing the border in California and they're going to spread out through America. Right. Yeah. That's, we don't worry. So we don't you know what, their fellas, skill sets. I'm in the same place in America, right down here on the border. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we don't know these individual skill sets, like you brought up at the beginning coming across, if there's nothing of a, of a record or if the record was wiped off, we don't know. We don't know. That could be a very talented chemist. We don't know. Hundred yeah. percent, yes, sir. Sheriff, let me ask. Let me ask you this because this is this is a topic. Um, obviously, I'm recovering opiate addict. That was my drug of choice. I had a 23 year addiction to it. I've now been clean for 24 years, or almost 24 years. Uh, then, there, there well, there's not much I don't know about addiction and and treatment, be, simply because I did it all <laughs> um, and perfected it. By the way, um, and and. And, and, and so my, and this is kind of a two, three fold deal. Are you seeing accidental overdoses in Texas? And I'm going to tell yeah. you why in a minute I'm asking you that question. Yes, sir. And, and I, I've, I, I had an opportunity to hit a, hit a home run on an interview the other day. And I was trying to, trying to articulate set my mind and completely messed up this portion of the interview. But, but Yes. Fentanyl poison in Texas, but if I can get a little more specific, so yep. my my area, we've been kind of of a bubble, just like during the whole COVID mess. Um, we're in a unique part of Texas, very rural. Um, out here, we don't measure distances in miles; we just we measure distances in hours. 
Everything's far away. <laughs> yeah. But but a neighboring community to, to mine, Alpine, Texas, which is out in the, the heart of the Big Bend region of Texas, since January, they've had four fentanyl overdoses. Or I'm sorry, four fentanyl poisonings. We hadn't seen it that close to home yet. So it's it's finally made its way into rural West Texas. What what drug was the fentanyl found in? That I don't know yet. They're still doing the, the, the toxicology. It's in a neighboring county. I, I just know they've had those four four poisonings. So I, I, I'm not sure what it may have laced or, or whatnot. Okay. So the reason why I, I asked that question is, is this. Whether it's in Maine, Rhode Island, Florida, California, Arizona, doesn't matter. We, and I include all of us in this we, right? Law enforcement, district attorney's offices, people like us that have done an outstanding job of making fentanyl awareness a reality. We have got it out there. I mean, if you if, if you can't swing a dead cat anywhere without hitting a sign that says fentanyl kills. Yes. And so, again, we have done a very, very good job of that. But when I hear, and I'm going back to, this is why law enforcement, even physicians, uh, 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 our, our lawmakers, they... And again, please don't take offense to this. Most do not understand addiction and or the addict. Okay. And this is something that we try to get across to everybody. Fenton, look, when you are an opioid addict, you're th that's not an accidental poisoning. We are seeking out fentanyl. When you use fentanyl, when you finally reach that plateau or that level of having to take a fentanyl by, by itself, you that's what you're looking for. That's right. what we need in our bodies in order not to get dope sick. A Vicodin isn't going to replace that fentanyl. A Norco isn't going to replace that fentanyl. When we're out there looking for it, we know that fentanyl is already laced in Xanax. We already know that fentanyl is in, in an M30 pill. By the way, we're not going to waste our time on a fentanyl test strip. Why would we waste our drug testing it when that's what we need? As an, as an addict. We're spending a again. I, I I I've got I've actually gotten in a little trouble for saying some of this stuff, but but I'm sorry. This is the reality. Until people start to understand addiction and the addict and how we think and how our mind works during during our addiction, we're not going to get anywhere. Yes, sir. We don't. Uh, nobody gets the fact that 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 a 30 day treatment stay ain't going to fix this problem. Right. Yeah. So, no, and, and some good points. And, you know, and, and talking about um, when I talk about when I, I interact with, with people that I arrest or whatnot, you know, we're, we're human. I have my own vices that uh, that that I can definitely, I think, under not completely understand, but, but comprehend that whole. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But uh, but there's a, another group I, I spoke at that's the, the Hope uh, Movement Foundation on Arkansas. And uh, and they're working on that. Not not just that educational piece but that recovery and, and having people that are available to to work with those people um and it's got another term and i just don't have it in, in, in my mind or the tip of my tongue right now but but what they're doing is what you just described that other piece of solving this epidemic and uh but then again it, it takes me back to when i was in arkansas and, and talking with um some of those um folks that are in the law enforcement piece and and how the cartel, meaning people from Mexico, they may, you know, they may be in the community where there's good people working, but there's those one or two people that are helping bring that pipeline of drugs into rural yeah. America, other throughout the United States. I mean, their tentacles are, are just all throughout the United States of America. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a deep web for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 an extremely deep web. You know, uh, I own a treatment facility as well, and um, uh, it, it, you know, and again, detoxing somebody, you know, 
off off of fentanyl, th that's tough even under the best of conditions. Um, but people with with opioid addictions have to be detox medically. I don't know any. I mean, may, maybe I know one or two guys over the years that have done it cold turkey, but but it just doesn't happen. You know, and, and our system, and again, this isn't sort of much for this conversation, but but our system is so ass backwards at this time. We haven't really changed treatment procedures in, in 50 years. You know, it's 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 kind of it's kind of the same. We're talking about, you know, we're talking about long term harm reduction and people being on Zaboxone and methadone and these kinds of things that keep people trapped. You know, they're they're not clean and sober, they're trapped, you know. Um Good point. right. I have but, heard that. That's Yes, you, you bet. Short term harm reduction keeps us alive long enough to seek whatever type of treatment that we want. Long term harm reduction keeps us trapped. You got to remember, we're giving a narcotic to a narcotic addict. What do you think we're going to do? You think we're going to say, no, don't give it to me? Of course we are. And until again, law enforcement and 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 our lawmakers understand that there's no cure for this damn disease and that it takes not months, but years in order for brain function to come back to any type of normalcy. We're, we're, we're still going to be at a loss. Why do you think relapse rates are, are, are through the roof? Recovery rates are 7% in the United States. That's a 93% unsuccessful rate. Wow. So, so we're, we're, we're again, we're, there's so many different avenues uh, that, that we have to come from to attack this thing that, that we're, and we're not talking enough about the treatment side of it. Yes, sir. You know, and, 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 and again, I, you know, we work with, with our local DEA guys here. We work with our local PD. I love these men and women. Okay. That are, that are doing this. My God, I think, I think the world of all of them and they're doing their jobs, right? You're doing yours. I don't care if you guys stop stop a truck that's got, you know, or a car that's got 350,000 pills in it, you know, uh, 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 M30 pills. That's that's a minor amount by the way. Yes sir. Right? But guess what? By 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 stopping that vehicle and those 350,000 pills, you just saved a few lives in there, if not a whole bunch. Right? So we ha we have to keep going that. But if we don't add this other piece of treatment into it, we're not we're we're not going to see a change in my lifetime. And, and I'm learning from you as you speak, and, and and have heard pieces of that, but but never at at, at that whole that whole manner. Um, yeah. No. So 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 I'll just say this: if you ever <laughs> need us to come in, you need me to come down and speak on on this type of stuff. You just call me, and my big butt will be on an airplane. <laughs> okay, in five minutes. We love Texas. Well, we love it, Texas. You know, it, and I appreciate that. And with you saying that, I've, I've actually got three fathers coming in mid-March that have, have lost children to fentanyl and uh, yeah. to come down to the border. And, and one of them is Mark Murphy. He lost his daughter, Lizzie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from out of Ohio. And, and, you know, he's been down to Cochise County in southern Arizona before. But I'm going to bring him out and entertain him, show him what, what the border looks like here. Of course, what we deal with is I articulated to you a lot different than what we see in other locations. But um, but you know, I, I want to be—I want to be part of that voice. I want to learn more about it and, and um, help because I've been given this sort of platform, if you will, um, because I was a border patrol agent. Now that I'm a sheriff on the border, um, I, I've had the opportunity to be interviewed on, on numerous, you know, news networks, right. and and I want to help those families that, that have, have lost loved ones. Um, sure. Again, I, I, I see it. I. I I was kind of a product of it. I could have gone down that same, yeah. you know, my yeah. parents were into drugs. I mean, it's just, I care about people. I, I don't care where you come from, what you do. I had friends that I grew up with that have gone to prison and, and are in some of those same situations, but it's, you know, it's, it's right. want to help. Just right. want to help. You know, when you're, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with a family that has lost a child, first of all, that is, we can, we can, until you've been through it, you can never, put yourself in, in, in their position at all. And what's difficult, what's most difficult about it is the fact that I'm a parent, right? We're all parents here. It, 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 it's nobody, nobody wants to admit that their kid went down this road, 
but most of those kids they 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 kind of knew what they were taking now if it was if it was four years you know three years ago to, to, to seven years ago uh those are accidental over accidental poisonings okay yes because they're buying they were, they were buying xanax at the time and they had no and had no clue but nowadays like i said earlier and i don't want to beat this to death but but again it's something that that the drug user is is actually searching out here but when you lose a child as a human being how do you argue or how do you even discuss that with a parent i'm going to let that one go every single time you know because that that child is gone and that's what i try to get across to people you know if you're going to talk to parents you got you, you the, the, this is the key, this is key You've got to tell them to get in their kid's business. I don't care if you're going to piss your kid off or not. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, I sir. just don't care. Love is inherent. Love doesn't go away. That kid is going to say that they hate you and they don't. All right? Because the last thing you want to be doing is closing the lid on that coffin. Yes, sir. That's the last damn thing a parent wants to do. But we, st and so some of these organizations that, that start going out there and speaking on this, I, I wow, this could get me in some trouble. <laughs> a, a lot of them of what they're doing is they are again. I understand where they're coming from, but they're promoting the long term harm reduction piece to this because they're 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 thinking if they just would have done that, their child would still be alive. So how do you argue with that as 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 a human being? But in the long run, it doesn't. It it I'm sorry it it's 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 not going to take care of the problem, you know. Um, again, that's devil on one shoulder, angel on the other type stuff. Yes, you sir. Know, yes, sir. You know, and no, that's that that's tough stuff. Yeah. No, and and, and you know, and I, a few families out there that are are doing that education piece and and uh, doing a phenomenal job. I mean, traveling yep. the state and, and getting word out. Um, but like you mentioned, you know. It being in, in, in Texas, and and then I mentioned that it just got into our area. Um, I think there's still areas that people aren't aren't educated. And, and I agree. Know, now I agree. Knowing where you come from, ab absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think one of the saddest parts of this, and I want to go back to the public health and safety, um, is you know that societal pressure upon it has removed the ability for law enforcement individuals to for interdiction to sit and and come in and and be like you know i don't know where this shift happened when i was a kid it was like man that person's really suffering how can we help now it's well they're just using and they're on the street fine let them let them live they're, well for one they're not going to live very long especially what's in the drug supply now Yes, like, sir. how disheartening is that? I mean, I've got my adopted guy in my neighborhood that I'll talk about often, and I've at, tried to ask him if he wants help, but that doesn't even collate to him. His, his, he's so far gone into a, his addiction that, boy, it would be really nice if an officer there in the neighborhood was able to go up to him and go, hey, you are here, a 5150, you are a threat to yourself and other people. I've not seen him harm other people scare them when he's high and come in and intervene and take this person. You know, some people need a period of being locked up. Yeah. Right. They just, they do. I've known yeah. so many people that have recovered and go, boy, my arrest was the best thing. And yep. incarceration was the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. And I'll tell you, so and you bring up a great point, even off this specific topic, but whether it's, um, you know, adult protective services, child protective services, I, you know, there's times we we report because I, you know, I, I work w within you know law, um, and I can't just go you know kidnap somebody off the street. <laughs> but at times when you when you call those people, and it's almost like you you get nowhere, no. And right. I hear exactly what you're saying. It's a great it's a great point. I'm, you, you know how how do we how do we accomplish that um, without you know in, in kidnapping somebody or invading their right. But I, I totally see what you're saying because I've had instances in my own community where, where we've called those services I mentioned and it's like no, no one comes out. 
it's like they don't care. Um, but then they have their own guidelines. I, I don't know what that correct answer is. I, I don't. Right. Um, but I, I know it's, you know, and I guess that's what, what's so wonderful about me being the sheriff of my, my, my hometown. And, um, it, and we've got people that has some use, some personal use and whatnot, but, but knowing who those people are checking on them, um, you, you know, and, and genuinely caring, caring about them. Sure. Yeah, so, sure. Sure. Well, sure. I think it's just such a huge part of a uh, uh, BS rhetoric that's taken place over the years. Yes. You know, okay. We saw it in the news. Yes. Sometimes law enforcement officers, a very, 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 very small percentage shouldn't be doing that job. And then there's some that make mistakes because they're high pressure, pressure situations. Sure. I have a personal friend, Sheriff, where I live. She was fired upon. Sadly, she had to return fire. She got a lot of flack. And it was kind of like I, I said to her was, well, the I guess the social media comments would be a lot different if it was you in the casket, wouldn't it? 100 percent right and people forget she's this. alive yes they forget the dangers of of what you men and women go through yep. every day every potentially day. that none of us understand and we've just gotten in this rhetoric like like if a if a cop sitting and talking to say my buddy there my adopted buddy that people will be now how dare you well maybe they're just checking on him like do you forget that law enforcement does that i, I don't know how many times i've had a flat tire that a a CHP or a cop is pulled over like, Hey, you need any help? No tow trucks on the way, or I, I got it. And, and, you know, I've had them where they're like, well, this is a pretty dangerous area. I'm going to pull behind you, put up my flashes on, make sure you get that tire on safe. You know, and let me add to that if you, if you don't mind. So um, my career as a border patrol agent, you know, we we're not doing local law enforcement stuff. There's times, yes, we assist them and we rely on that partnership. But until I took over as sheriff, um, Wow. I mean, I always knew what local law enforcement did, but until I was the one doing it, um, sometimes I'm a coach. Sometimes I'm a marriage counselor. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm the dog catcher. Sometimes I'm scrubbing toilet bowls. I mean, a lot of times they want us to solve things that really isn't in our realm and I'm willing to do it and help out. Um, and, and then again, on the other side, just because I'm the sheriff doesn't mean I'm there to put everybody in jail. I'm here to keep the peace right. and make sure my, my communities, you know, working together, getting along. But uh, but no, it really opened my eyes as to what local law enforcement do. And, and, and again, I'm in a small area. I can't imagine, you know, in, in some of these big, you know, cities, it, it's, it's a lot, fellas. It really is. Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate you, you, you making that comment and bringing that to, to people's attention. 100%. You bet. Sir. Sheriff, I, I, I want to ask you this too. Um, is, is, is it, is it a, you, look, you don't have to give away law enforcement's deep, dark secrets here. I, ne I would never even ask. But is it a fallacy that that or is it true that the cartels are actually harming children, teenagers, adults, if they if if they're asking that family to bring whatever drug, fentanyl, whatever the drug is over the border, if they don't do it, are they are they harming, killing those people? Definitely. There. So first of all, there's nothing that crosses that border. It, it doesn't mean in every situation, but there's nothing that crosses that border that doesn't have the blessing of the cartel. Got um, it. You know, the, the car, there's not one big giant cartel. Each each cartel has their own little operating area. At times they combat each other. At times they may still, and it's happened down in the Rio Grande Valley, yep. um, around Laredo, where they that that's probably the most. Um, I, I'm, what's the best term? They're at war the most. Those two cartels in that area, um, and they'll they'll rip off each other's um, loads of illegal aliens and, and completely kill them. Um, but then again, you have the the child trafficking piece where right. um, an illegal alien wants to cross the border, and they know that if they cross with the child, that they're going to be released. Um, so they'll get a. a we've, we've we've had it happen not here in in Sanderson, but when I was a border patrol agent, different locations along the border. That's why we started doing DNA testing to test the, the, the child and the person that was claiming mm -hmm. it was theirs because they would cross with this child. The child would go back to Mexico and then reappear with with, with another person. Now, we can't we can't fingerprint children under the age of 14. Yeah. So there was no way to track that. So we started utilizing DNA tests. This administration stopped that. Oh, I couldn't tell you why. But 
but yes, no. So once also once the cartel smuggles somebody across the border, and, and I just spoke again, a couple apprehensions I had recently talking to the groups, how much are y'all having to pay anywhere from five to $8,000 for somebody from Mexico, um, people from Central America on down South, maybe $15,000. And you get in the Chinese, they're, they're paying upwards of $50,000. And yes, they have this money. If they don't have it all up front, they pay half of it in Mexico. They pay the half, other half when they get to their smuggling destination. If they can't afford it, then they become a servant to the, the cartel. So Houston, for instance, um, a lot of little bars, if you will, that are, that are, um, of course, Houston's the, the smuggling destination of the world, the human trafficking destination, or at least the United States. Um, all these little bars where a, a lot of the younger women are, are, are taken to yeah. work off their smuggling fee. Um, and there's in the backs of these bars, there's places where they perform their services. So, um, yes, uh, the, the cartel controls it. And if they see somebody they like, they may just keep them. So, um, wow. But we, we, we also, you mentioned it earlier. We're the strict, we're the greatest country in the world. We still are, regardless yep. of our division and everything that's going on. But we have enough information on the cartels in Mexico, and, and historically, the, the the federal agencies that work with with the the, the Mexican agencies, and, and we used to work with the Marines, the Mexican Marines, CMAR, and, and a vetted group, and. You, we have the ability to to do more yeah. damage is the wrong word. We can go out and, and take them out if we wanted. Why we don't, I, I can't tell you. But to get back to this this part, and I kind of got off topic, but is, you know, we have all these investigative agencies, right. um, whether it's Homeland Security Investigations, DEA, um, ATF, FBI, you know, at the ground level, they, they work, they do great work together. But when you get to that national level where yeah. they're fighting over budgets, you know, their casework amount to dollars. So at that federal level, they don't want to work together. We need someone in, in the White House that's going to make these federal agencies work together, share information uh, to go down and have a greater impact in the country of Mexico as well as, as further out. So one small example, and I know if you need to interrupt me, please do. When no, I was no, a patrol headquarters, I worked in an office called the Office of Anti-Terrorism. We, 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 we work with all agencies that I just mentioned. Um, and of course, we're interdictors. Can we investigate? Yes, but our main job is to interdict along the border. So all that information we capture, they all want because it feeds their cases. Um, we have it within Customs and Border Protection, which is Border Patrol's parent agencies. Um, you know, when you fly out of the country or you leave California to go into Mexico, excuse me, you see the, the men in the blue suits that are Customs, off yep. Customs and Border Protection officers. That's our sister in law enforcement. They have a they have a database that's they may have changed the name I'm not sure if it's the same anymore it was called APIS Advanced Passenger Information System tracking everybody that's coming into the United States from a foreign country whether they're flying or driving so we took a small snapshot out of that database married it up to DEA's investigative database and the correlations we were able to make between people they know were known money couriers and every time that person traveled you had three or four other people traveling. If we could just merge this information, which can be done, sure. we could make a huge dent in criminal activity out, outside the United and within the United States. But again, it's it's all about budgetary, how much you're going to get for your agency. It's, it's frustrating, gentlemen. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can only imagine how frustrating it is for you guys. I, I mean, for, for, I don't know, but I mean, obviously, I know how where you're going to go with this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. but, but when I when I hear this, I again, I, I just. I just can't figure it out. I mean, look, I'm old enough to, un I understand budgets. I, I I understand all of that, right? But when we're at a national emergency where we're at right now, this, this should never be a partisan issue at all. I posted something the other day, and I want you to think about this one. You know, we lost, a, 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 again, numbers are always, are always askew. But yes. we lost over a little over 110,000 people last year to an opioid overdose. That if a 747 holds 463 passengers, that equiv equivalates to a to a to a 747 going down every day for 32 weeks out of the year. If that happened, you don't think we'd put a stop to that shit? In a New York minute. 
why why aren't we doing this? Yes, sir. And we can do it. And we can do we, it. That that's the frustrating part. We can do it. Yeah. Right. Well, what do I always say, Flint? Follow the money, and I'm going to throw ego in there. Yeah. You're yeah. right. You're and right. it's sad because it's human lives, and it's our number one killer. Yeah, it is. It's now it, our number one killer. That's heart disease, diabetes, all these, uh, di you know, DUI wrecks, all these, you know. Fentanyl is the number one killer. It's just, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's um, there, there, there was something else I was going to ask you, too, Um you know, you we, you mentioned the fact of of that that three and a half tons of methamphetamine. Mm. You know, we don't we don't talk enough about the meth issue that's that's going on in this country. And the reason why I'm I'm bringing up the meth issue is we we live in an area, by the way, that is get, can be pretty desolate as well. You know, we've got mountains, we've got the the valley here that's spread out to hell and back. Um. But when when you're talking about treatment for methamphetamine, insurance companies don't pay for methamphetamine treatment. They simply don't do it. You know, so so and 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 meth users are a whole, and I don't mean this really, but are a whole different animal. Oh yeah. You know, you know, to tr to try to to try to help somebody that's had you know even even a a, a short term uh, a, a addiction is difficult. To to treat a long term meth addict is damn near impossible. Okay, is damn near impossible because you can't you can't keep them you can't keep them um, sedated enough to where we can even start to talk about some sort of therapy or treatment for them because they're all they're all over the board. You know, it's it's again this is stuff that is just popping into my head because it's so important but we're 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 not talking about it and the other thing we're not talking about and you mentioned it sheriff and we've all talked about it today is the child trafficking when it comes to fentanyl heroin they're not giving these kids meth they're 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 not giving them speed they're not giving them something that's going to let them run crazy they're sedating them and you sedate with with opioids. You sedate with benzodiazepine. Again, we're not talking about that in this country as, as either. It's a whole different drug. And I and I wonder why. You know, I wonder why we're not talking about. So when you've got that kid, even if, let's just say that kid is fifteen years old, and that we'll use a little girl as an example, and she's been trafficked. And she's been performing the services that she's required to do, and they've got her on 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 fentanyl. And let's say law enforcement comes in and rescues her. What are they doing with that kid? Because if they don't get her the proper help, guys, and if she starts to go through withdrawal symptoms, she's going to go right back possibly go right back. I'm not going to say for sure, possibly back to where she was, or at least, at least try to find more fentanyl somewhere or whatever drug she's using. We just can't rescue and say, okay, you're good to go now. Right. Because they're not good to go. They've been abused and beaten and, and, and treated like animals. You, you just, Again, guys, I could go off on this for 16 straight hours because it drives me nuts. We try to do one good thing over here, but yet again, we don't, there, there's a saying, we do things good, we don't do things great. No, and you're open up to, to a whole nother side of it that that, uh, that that I've heard bits and pieces of, but, but just, you know, not as focused on, 100%, not yeah. as focused on. And that and, and see, and that's what we that's what we focus on here. And and Sheriff, one of the reasons why we we do so much of that here is is because during my addiction, a, a, again, I wasn't beaten, I wasn't sexually abused, I I wasn't any of that stuff. But back then, nothing has changed from back then to now. We didn't have the resources back then when I when when I was using, and we and we again we don't have them now. Why? Why not? Well, and, and I hate, to, I hate to make this point, but you know, they, they, the, I've got, I served in the military. My wife served in the military. I've got a son currently in the Middle East. Definitely support helping out other countries and, and, and being that one that 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 fends off the bullies. 
But when we're sending billions of dollars to other countries, yeah, it wouldn't even take that much to do some of that, what you just right. described. Right. I mean, so that's... Yeah. In I, fact, in, in fact, most states, because I do own a treatment center, they're not doing this, but but it feels like it. It feels like they're doing everything to to make sure we can't keep our doors open by increasing this price and that price and this rule and this state and this 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 state requirement. And you know, and and it just goes on and on. And in California, I mean, my God, I I, I mean I would I would rather be doing what I'm doing in any other state in the country instead of here. They make it damn near impossible for us to even function and for us to even to be able to help people in the correct way. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I, again, I can't express enough. Every life counts in America. I mean, you guys are both examples. A person can be rehabilitated. Yep. We got to take care of our America, Americans, our border first, our veterans, and whatever, you know, and many of right. them are so those things, same thing. So, um, and I think we, all Americans would agree that, right? But why aren't our, our politicians on that same page? <laughs> That's the million dollar question right. right there. You want my theory? Okay. So if we're giving all this aid to another country to fight their war, fight off the bullies, where, what usually happens? Okay. And Hey, I, I, firearm owner, Flint firearm owner, not got no problem with that, but a corporation then has to make more and then they make money. Well, then where does a lot of their money go? Well, we got these things called lobbyists, yes. which makes no sense. I worked in radio for 20 years. And if a record company handed me $150 to play a song, I could be prosecuted. But you're telling me you can give millions as a company to people that decide our legislation, really? Yeah, because it sure ain't looking out for us constituents. You're looking yeah. out for this corporation. So that's you know, and how much does a person need? Meaning, hey, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I truly am. I've got my federal pension. I'm not rich. Um, I took this job. I didn't have to, but I did, making a quarter of what I was making. And, and I don't say that to to try to, you know, elevate. It's just I would do this for free, but again, how right. much do you need? I, I live a good, comfortable life. Right. Um, I eat great. You know, I'd rather have a home, a home cooked meal, cook my own steak. Yes, I'll go. Out and see how much is a person need, you, man? You know. Yeah. 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 You know. Uh, I, I know it's it's uh, I'm it's, speechless at a lot, man. I am. I'm just yeah. Just, <laughs> well, Sheriff, look, and you know, we we need we need men and women like you, you know, that 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 are that are out there. We 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 but but we also need and you're doing it, which when you started talking about it, I'm just I'm going, this is great to myself. Because it's it's just not about stopping the border. I mean, it is, but it's also, again, like you said, taking care of your community, but telling people the truth about this. Nothing drives me crazier is when somebody's talking about anything in addiction and not giving the full story. You know, and, and let me just give you a small example. When we're talking about, and if you're talking about long-term harm reduction with, with, with somebody, nobody ever explains what the long-term potential health problems are to long-term uh, harm reduction, meaning being on Zaboxone or methadone or some other replacement narcotic. They don't talk about the heart issues, the sleep disorders, the 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 bowel obstructions, and the list goes on and on and on. And you want to know why? Because I had them all and I got them all. Well, two open heart surgeries. They had to repair me in places. I'm not going to tell you on the air, okay? Because of what the drugs did to my to my digestive tract. You know, wow. I, I, I I mean, it goes on and on. So, again, we're not telling the entire truth about this stuff. It, and that's that's brand new to me. Honestly, so I'll be I'll be, you know, again, and I don't I, I would be more than happy to sit down with you and 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 or to, or to come out and 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 to just educate we're going to also send you some information okay on 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 what we give my personal website and all that stuff because that's that's what I do I educate the hell out of everybody on this from a to z 
you know, because you guys need to know. You need yes. to know when you're talking to a, to a 17 year old. All right, that look, it's not necessarily that we're trying to to well, we are trying we are trying to save them and to change them, but you have to be able to tell them, look, this these are the possible consequences to your actions here. Have to mm -hmm. even even if they don't believe you. Yeah. And I'm smiling because you, you you're making me think, and, and you you bring me back to a, a, a great a, a great environment I grew up in a great church great family and, and my faith my own decision but the way we grew up but it reminds me of being being told rock and roll music's bad sex is bad <laughs> drink it's bad there was no but there was no follow-up and then no as follow -up. you get older you, you realize what 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 the bad part so exactly it, it's right I, I, education it's bad okay but it's it's not just that you can can be addicted this is what can happen if you survive and you get later in life so some great points Great point. Uh -huh. I'm 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 laughing with you because I because I I grew up in that era too. You know where <laughs> where where it was, and and what it did is it just made me want to try more more crap. Okay, <laughs> because because you know there's a bunch of us that that are you know when your mom told you the plate was hot, I didn't believe her. You know I'm a <laughs> I'm gonna touch the plate to see if it's hot. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, God, this yeah, was. And I was another one. I was the other one that goes, "Oh, yes, ma'am." I never second guess. So, <laughs> and it's, it's what's funny too. You know, I've got I got three children. My my two boys are eighteen months apart, and uh, it, great kids, man. And, and but I, one of them's just like me. And I can remember he was going to to preschool, and and, and I'm saying it's the first day. Of, or I didn't. I said, "What are y'all doing today?" Expecting to hear it's the first day of school, and and the the one that's like me goes, "I'm going to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am." You know, <laughs> I wasn't looking for that, but. <laughs> On that, I got to share this real quick. People all the time when they ask where I'm born, and I said, Salinas, California. What, did you live in Texas or something? I go, no, I've only visited a few times. And they, everybody thinks I'm from Texas because of my manners and the way I talk. That's and I right. go, I just grew up with a mom that manners was everything. Everything. Hey, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a great thing and a heck of a compliment to be complimented. You, you're similar to a Texan. But yes, but I tell you, I'm a proud Texan and I married a West Virginian and, and West Virginia is a beautiful state. And when I got shipped to Arizona with the Border Patrol, my first duty station, I had to get back to Texas because I was 100 percent Texan. And I got back and then realized there's a whole other world out there, fellas. And, and <laughs> Arizona was a great state. California's got some beautiful parts. I mean, we, we live in a great country. We do. We do. We, really we do. do. Yeah, we really do. I I, I hope that. A huge shift can come back, you know, one of those other components to this that I see, and I don't think we've really talked about here, is when I was a kid, if I got in trouble, my mom found out really quick oh. from friend XYZ's parents. And it wasn't not my kid. It was, what did you do? <laughs> We're going to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, there the truth was in the middle. But that's gone away. And I think that's a big issue, too, that I don't know that we can solve. But I really want to put that out there because hopefully people go, yeah, I don't know my neighbors that have lived next door for 10 years by their first name right. or even their last name. Right. So, you I know, don't know. In, in that same vein. So I, I was on the school board for eight years, president of the school board for a few years. But it's, it's to where parents are worse than the kids. Oh, God, Yes. Oh, yeah. It's worse than the kids. So. Oh, 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 <laughs> Don't spank my kid, which I got a lot of spankings in school. Not that I was just, but we, you know, I, we, we ran, they, they ran a good school. It was great. But nowadays it's don't touch my kid and don't. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, when, 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 when I was a kid, this, this is no kid. Like there were four, four of my best buddies. All of our parents, what, what, they all went to two different high schools, but they all went to those two different high schools together. All right. So so when I was a fifth grader and if I needed my my butt whooped. All right. My friend's dad was allowed to whoop my ass. OK. <laughs> and, right. And and my dad was was allowed to whip my buddy's ass. I, I mean, it's just the way it was, you know. And guess what? Nobody wound up on the psychiatrist's couch. Yes, sir. Not one of us. We all survived. Right. For sure. There, For there sure. it is. Well, is that good keeping in line? Uh, you know, talking about this made me think of the first Back to the Future movie where Marty goes back and has dinner with his grandparents and his mom, and that the grandpa goes, "Ah, kid's an idiot. If you follow him home, probably idiots there too." <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> Mr. Anderson. Sheriff, thank you so much. This has been just, I, I'm so glad Jason connected and we connected. This is, this is important, important stuff that you're doing down there and your team. Um, I, again, we cannot give you enough credit. You guys put your lives on the line every day for us. Yes, and, uh, and, and you are appreciated. You are loved. You are all of those things. Um, thank you. you, 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 you bet. Um, yeah, we are we are going to stay in touch. We're going to get you some information here, okay? And hopefully we can come to. I, I, I would actually love to come down to the border sometime and see that personally. To, oh, to open see invitation, um, you, you oh, got open it. Open invitation for you both. Thank you for having me. It, it's been educational for me. It really has, and, and some good points to to put some more thoughts on it and look forward to receiving whatever you send me. So thank you. You, you, you got thank it. You and we will, and let's do, keep doing this. I mean, let's get the, we keep doing it, get some updates, let our listeners know what's going Absolutely. on. Cause th that th our society needs to know exactly what you guys are doing down there. Barring so, any, barring any, any secretive stuff that you got to yeah. do. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm All right. Okay yeah. too, so. All right. Thank you. Well, if people want to connect with the sheriff, find out more about the work that uh, you have up on your social media, all those links are in the podcast description. So folks, please uh, check it out. And of course, thank you for listening. Hit that subscribe button if it's your first time, either Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or if you're watching on YouTube and please share with someone else. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, please call Pain Parents and Addicts in Need at 559 559- 579-1551 or visit us online at painnonprofit.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Pain Nonprofit. And please subscribe to the Don't Hide the Scars podcast and share with others wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And if you would like to donate to Pain, Parents and Addicts in Need, Please click the link in the description to make your tax-deductible donation today and help us save more lives gripped by addiction.